I think humans should never fit in one size fits all. I think many of us, you know, I think, who's 45 or older? Raise your hands. So for everybody who raised their hand, including me, we all grew up where there was no other option. It, there, it couldn't even clear one of our heads that one would not go to college. It'd be like not breathing oxygen. It was like completely unacceptable. I think, how old are you my friend? 41. I think your kids are gonna be the generation of parents that bring this number all the way down to 30 to 50% of people that go to college. Not because college isn't good. College is amazing for certain people. But college is not amazing for a lot of other people. And what got me going, because I produce a lot of content around college, was all I do is listen and then I talk. So I was getting hundreds of DMs from kids who were 26, 25, 27, who had 50, 60, $100,000 in debt, couldn't get a job, nobody cared. Outside of the top 15 colleges in America, after that, it's like almost completely irrelevant, right? And most companies, I mean, VaynerMedia doesn't, we have, I have no idea what college any of my employees go to. Facebook, Google, these are real companies now not requiring college education. I think the cat's out of the bag. The way college was structured, I mean, I, I'm a big fan of common sense. I think common sense is super underrated. I, when I found out when I was like 27 that you could be a fraud, declare bankruptcy, and be okay to start over, but you could never declare bankruptcy or clean your college debt, I was like, some shit's fucked up with that. <laughs> so I think we had heavy propaganda, which is fine. I think it really served the purpose I'm sure the people that are 60 and older in this crowd will tell you, everybody that went to college in the 70s and 80s, when they got that diploma, there was an ROI on that and it worked out. That is not 2023 and we have a lot of children who are like me, who get no value from a box education system, can't learn that way, aren't getting any value, they have the internet. I, yeah, I think, I think you're barking up a potential tree, but I'll give you my example. My kids are the same age. One of my kids is moonwalking to college and she will dominate. The other one, I think he's got a chance of not going. And he may go because it's a four year vacation. <laughs> no, I'm being really serious. Like, he may go because it's a four, like, to me, I would tell, if my son was 18 today, I would say, do what I did. It was a, the last four year vacation of my life. I played Madden and hung out all day because I knew I was gonna work from 22 to 100. And maybe it's worth it. And that's what I think it is. Like the hardest thing, like the only thing I'm not interested in the world is to tell someone how to parent their child. It's completely ridiculous. But there are macro themes. And I do think there are people in here who get bought into propagandas that become religion. And that's good. Like some of it's very positive, but some of it can be negative. The thought, here's the one that bothers me to no end. Parents that force their kids to go to college and don't pay for it are pieces of shit. <laughs> it's one thing if you're like very big on college and you need it and you force your kid, then you better at least pay for that shit. Because the ROI, the math is very clear, right? The math is very clear. It is not working for a lot of people. The fact that we even have to have a debate that the government's gonna bail out people with college, think about that. Think about how bad this has gotten. And worst of all, forget about money, fuck money. These kids are deeply unhappy that have to go there. They have so much more creative firepower. But Gary, they get to meet people and it's the community. I'm like, so is going to Europe for the summer. Self-awareness. So if somebody actually thinks they're an entrepreneur at 15, 16 and has proved it, she sells blow pops or she has a website on Shopify, if you are truly an entrepreneur and you are gonna take debt mm -hmm. to go to college, I will punch you in the face and try to stop you. Mm -hmm. I couldn't believe in it less. Mm -hmm. If you wanna work in this building at Boston Consulting, you better go to something solid undergrad and you better go Ivy League Business School mm -hmm. because you wanna work at Boston Consulting, McKinsey or Bain, yeah. as you mentioned it early. I think you have to figure out what you want in life and work backwards. I am unbelievably down on the business of education in America 
if you are trying to do entrepreneurial things and or if, you know who I'm most scared of? Uh, I'll go to Wisconsin or Michigan Whoa. or Florida, you know, those kind of schools and take on debt and think I'm gonna have a good job out of school. Those, those great schools kind of in the upper middle, the upper middle class of schools, they're getting suffocated. There's only room for Harvard and Stanford great jobs, but these unbelievably great schools, if you, now if mommy and daddy pay for it, and you can go to the big game and you fuck Ohio State if you're Michigan or vice versa and play that whole life and you get four years, you get to have some fun, you get to mature a little bit, get out of the house, cool. But only if you want a job, A-Rod. Like if you want a job. How about if our audience wants to get rich? What's your advice to them? I think a lot of people will get rich by having a job. I think there's a lot of people who are number sixes who wanna be number ones and they're coming up with the Uber of dry cleanings and they're gonna lose and go into depression. And so I'm telling them, hey, this entrepreneur thing that you think is cool, you think I'm cool, it fucking sucks. You're lonely, it's all on you. If you lose, it's a scarlet letter. Are you that kid? Because if you went to Horace Mann and then you went to fucking Yale, you might not be that person. You might be a great number six. And so it's awesome to do that and then go to McKinsey and then become number six at Facebook or number six at a big company and you will become rich. But if you're like me, and you're from the dirt, and, you know, and you've always known that like sitting in a classroom isn't for you, and you've shown a nice knack for flipping sneakers and things of that nature, if your parents are forcing you to go to college because it makes them feel good, and you have to take on debt, it's time to stand up and have that conversation. And, and would you tell them that take 100 because it's not as cool as job and you're not gonna be stimulated, but you make 100, or go make 70 but do it with someone you're gonna admire, respect, and they're gonna teach you. I would not only tell them to make 70, I'm very rogue on this, I would tell them to make zero and live with nine of their best friends an hour commute away. Like, the amount of people I think Zero's should, a tight budget. Yes it mm -hmm. is, but but let me tell you where I'm going <laughs> yeah, with this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, look, obviously, if you had a social media job for yeah. your enterprise right yeah. now, and like I would some, hire you. I have respect, but if you want an <laughs> internal person, and a kid could either, a lot of people think you're free and they think it's about privilege. Well, of course, a white kid with a rich family can go free. Or, so when I look at my team's makeup, a lot of my not overly well-paid jobs in my company, especially on my team, are people who are just willing to eat shit for five years. People aren't willing to pay dues anymore. Mm -hmm. So to me, here's what's up. If you're willing, to live in a shitty apartment with five people and eat shitty food in your 20s when you can still get away with it, but you get to fucking work with A-Rod because you admire him and if you crush it then and want to move on, he puts you on or people know that you're the guy or the girl behind A-Rod Social, that $12 an hour job is a hell of a lot better than working at VaynerMedia for 52K. Mm -hmm. It just is. So this, this entire question is framed in the following. We have lived far too long in our society with one size fits all. Like right now, my biggest fear is that entrepreneurship is cool and everybody's going this route. When I was a kid, it was all school. Now I'm getting fucking 80,000 DMs from these kids like, yo Gary Vee, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm like, I just looked at your last six posts. You're not an entrepreneur. You're fucking floating on a swan in a fucking pool in the Hamptons this weekend. You're fucking soft. <laughs> I had a job, but my point is more like, my point, I went to college and yep. I got out of college yep. and I just like, all you were right, sold. Well, what do I do now? You were sold. All right, I'll just do this job. A hundred percent, and guess what? Then you get a job and you get a certain amount of money and then you buy dumb shit, which then forces you to stay in that job because fuck, you have an extra bedroom you didn't need or a fucking pair of Jordans that you didn't need. Like, it's, it's a fucking cycle and so mm -hmm. to me it's like, look, Happiness needs to be the ROI. Mm -hmm. You wanna make 42 a year and, and hockey's your favorite thing ever and you work for fucking the NHL on a shitty job forever, shitty by pay standards. Mm -hmm. Look, rich can't be the ROI. Mm -hmm. Some people are driven by money and mm -hmm. legacy and admiration. We all have our different shit. But you have to, and by the way, you have to figure out what makes you happy. And for a lot of people, the chase of rich or success or notoriety is that you have to make it about the game, about the thrill of the hunt. And that's a million different versions. And then you just have to stop worrying about what people think of you. The biggest reason most people are unhappy is they buy shit based on judgment of others. Like, mm -hmm. they don't wanna be judged for living in a shitty neighborhood or a shitty car, or it's just complete and utter lack of self-esteem.